When you drive a combustion car, the way you drive, the weather, having the heating on and about a zillion other factors affect your range of your vehicle. But we rarely give this a second thought. Perhaps we should. I mean, after all, around 600,000 drivers a year in the UK run out of petrol or diesel. Driving electric is different. Uh, but we're here to tell you what to expect when you switch. Whether it's the weather or the temperature, your achievable range will be affected by inclement conditions. And this is not exclusive to EVs. If you're driving uphill or into a driving wind, it will, of course, have a negative impact. Conversely, if you're driving downhill or with a wind at your back, that will have a positive impact. All fairly obvious so far, but what about colder conditions? Won't electric cars just seize up and die below freezing? Well, no, in fact, it's the conventional combustion engine that will you know, really struggle in cold conditions more than a durable battery. Most electric cars have a preheat function which warms the cabin before you set off. So you can throw your plastic ice scraper in the recycling bin. Oh, I do love that preheat function, but the cold weather will affect range, right? I mean, if the newspapers are to be believed, you can lose up to 50% of your range on a cold day. <laughs> well, in the depths of winter, if you have the heating on full, you might lose up to 25% of the range. So it's certainly a factor, but it's, it's not dissimilar in a petrol powered car, by the way. I mean, you know, that uses more fuel. It's just been a, a little bit more obscured. And if we're being really honest, you're unlikely to fancy a 200 mile drive on a freezing cold day anyway. Exactly, Jack. And what have you found since you've been driving electric? Well, I think mainly I've just been amazed by how incredibly easy it is. And there have been some occasions where I've noticed range being impacted by weather, but those times are few and far between. But I'm still a relative novice compared to you, and I am curious about the best way to charge an EV. Does that have an impact on range? Well, when I first got an EV, I made all the basic mistakes, all the classic mistakes. So, I, you know, I would charge it every single night, regardless of whether the car needed it or not, which was a real, real mistake. I've learned since then that, you know, typically I now charge two to three times a week. I only charge the kind of 80 or 90 percent of the time because that does really protect the battery, makes the battery last longer. That's a good tip. And presumably, if you do have to go on a longer journey, you can just raise the limit of charging temporarily. Yeah, exactly. There is another myth, that, which is about rapid charging, that rapid charging really damages the battery. And that's actually been shown to be really not the case. It doesn't have a detrimental effect, but if there is an impact, it's relatively small. And there are now plenty of electric taxis that only charge on rapid charges and other big fleets of electric vehicles. And it really isn't damaging the battery or, or reducing the life. OK, well, one thing we have to admit is that range can be confusing. So many different range standards. So are WLTP, NEDC, EPA range figures quoted by the industry to be trusted? I mean, WLTP, or as it's officially known, the Worldwide Harmonized Light Duty Vehicle Test Procedure, is an improvement on what was before, which was the NEDC, which was frankly completely unrealistic. That was rubbish. Uh, it's still off, but then uh, the US standard, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, their new measurements are slightly slightly more accurate, but they're all they're all very, very exaggerated, really. OK, so fair to say we take these numbers with a pinch of salt. Big bucket of salt, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we recommend using the EV database website as well as providing real world range. They also distinguish between different driving conditions and detail how efficient the car that you're considering is. So that's much more accurate. OK, so are there any special efficiency tips that you'd like to share with wannabe EV drivers? Well, I mean, experienced drivers will know that the less weight the car is carrying, the further it will go. Some might be slightly more surprised that uh, using technologies like cruise control can make it far more efficient. It might only save a tiny fraction of the energy, but the aerodynamic wheel covers on the Tesla Model 3, for example, will save more than 4%. Well, oh, that is niche knowledge. Nice. OK, we're going to talk a little bit more about driving style in more depth in a second. But before we do, let's talk to someone about their experiences living with an EV. I first tried an electric car in 2016. Um, I was working in the wind industry, but I had an un unhealthy affection for, uh, for cars. And so I tried a Nissan Leaf, um, and it changed my world, really. Uh, changed my career and changed the way I drive. Yeah, so I've owned an EV since 2017. I've been lucky enough to try a fair few over time through my work scheme. 
but uh, the Tesla's always been my favorite. Oh, the differences are huge. And some people think they're bad. When you have an EV, actually you're hearing different noises. Actually, you hear the t noise of the tires. But generally, EVs are much quieter too. So I really enjoy the torque and, and that effortless acceleration. But also, I've rediscovered listening to music. When I was younger, before I had kids, I used to just sit and listen to albums. Now when I commute to work, I use the quietness of the car, I stream music and I just really enjoy music again. To get the most out of an electric car is not overthink it. Some people think that it's fundamentally different. It is different, but not fundamentally. At the end of the day, it's still a car. But to get the most out of it, I just think about, I think ahead as to when I'm going to refuel it. So am I starting full? Is it within the range of the car? And if it's outside of the range of the car, I take two minutes just to think about what my charging options are. So generally the recommended advice is don't let the battery go below 10% and unless you're doing a long journey, don't charge above 80%. But I'm a firm believer in good engineering probably means that the engineers of the cars have built that into the, to the battery management. So actually, I try not to overthink, you know, the battery. When I'm driving, I don't want to feel like I'm in some kind of second class piece of technology. So I drive it like a car. I don't sit in a slow lane at 50 miles an hour. Because actually when you're driving an electric car, when you're charging on the, on the road, you're often charging faster than you can drive. So actually think about your overall efficiency of your journey, not just the efficiency of the battery. So one of the things you really realize is um, when you're driving an electric car, the different speed has to how fast you're using your electricity. You know, effectively you're pushing a large piece of steel through the air. So you learn very quickly that just a few less miles an hour gives you much, much greater range. So if you think you're not gonna make it on your journey, ease off just a little bit, you probably will. So the warranty on my car means that the battery will last at least 100,000 miles or eight years. So I'm pretty comfortable that in the time I'll have the car, the battery will be fine. I think there is a real worry that, uh, that, 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 the, that the battery won't last as long as the car. I'm actually probably more convinced that the car will wear out before the battery does and actually the battery will be repackaged in a box and become a second life battery, probably hanging on the wall of my garage or in the cupboard under the stairs. The running cost of my EV is significantly smaller than previous internal combustion engine cars. I've been running my car now for just shy of four years and 45,000 miles. And in fuel terms, it's cost me less than 2p a mile, but that's charging at home on a, an off-peak tariff. Um, and actually in running costs, it's cost me one set of tires and one wiper blade. And that is a significant saving over my previous internal combustion engine cars. Would I recommend an electric car to everyone? Actually, yes. Once you've tried it, you'll never go back. You realize how simple they are. It's an elegant form of transport. It's cleaner, both from a climate perspective, not completely clean because there's the manufacturer of the vehicle, but it's a much cleaner way of traveling, but also the air quality perspective. One of the dirtiest things we do uh, to our own local environment is have cars. So for me, I think it's almost a no brainer. And then once you've tried it, you'll never go back. My perspective on electricity has changed fundamentally by owning an EV. I mean, I don't like uh, about you, but when I open my electricity bill, it's just a page of numbers that I don't really understand and a pain point at the bottom where you have to pay. But actually by owning an EV, I now understand what 250 kilowatts means because actually that's not to 60 in about five seconds in my car. I also understand that 75 kilowatt hours, again, fairly meaningless, but for me, that's 200 miles of range. So that's now prompted me to think about my energy consumption I think about switching my energy provider, and now I have a time of use tariff that's allowed me to drive the car at less than 2p a mile. Well, thanks, Graham. Real world experience is so invaluable if you have yet to get behind the wheel of an electric car. I mean, like most cars, a smoother driving style will take you further between charging stops. Everyone's different, of course. I'm the type of driver who loves to eke out 
every last kilowatt and then bore people about it afterwards. But not everyone drives like an eco vicar. Quite. Yeah. In fact, there are some people out there who like to drive their cars like they stole them. Not that I know anyone like that, of course. Unsurprisingly, though, they will reduce the range potential of the car by driving that way, whether it's powered by currents or combustion. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's refreshing to see how much energy you use and how much energy you can get back using regenerative braking. If you can stop on that white line at the traffic lights without touching the brakes, result. Honestly, aside from their speed off the line, as someone who is something of a car nerd and driving enthusiast, regenerative braking has been a real revelation. I would actually go so far as to say that one pedal driving is addictive and potentially more enjoyable than mechanical braking? Sacrilege, I know. <sighs> well, I mean, there speaks a true convert. And we're confident that once you've tried an electric car, you will be too. As ever, thank you for joining us. And if you have been, thanks for watching.